they hate cryptos. <laughs> All right, so who do I mean by they? All right, so let's talk about it. Because you asked for it. So this is the Hey Ed YouTube channel, and I am your host, moderator, and all-around nice guy, Edward Anderson. I'm not a financial advisor. Don't construe anything that I mention in any of my videos as financial advice. Always do your own research before doing anything with your money. And today, we're going to be talking about how they hate cryptocurrencies. So who are they, you're wondering? <laughs> okay, well, we're talking about uh, commercial banks, we're talking about central banks, and we're talking about governments. Let's start with the commercial banks. Now, Jamie Dimon, who is the head of JP Morgan is famous for calling Bitcoin a Ponzi scheme and that it's worthless and that it's no good and that he will never buy one single Bitcoin. Okay, he's famous for that. And a lot of other bankers have said uh, the same thing. Now, very recently, uh, JP Morgan issued a pretty elaborate report uh, about the adoption of cryptocurrency by the overall public. And they found that in a very short two-year period, the adoption rate went from 3% to 13% in a very short period of time. And that is scary for the bankers. Now, they attributed that large increase in such a short period of time largely to that big worldwide cold that we had, okay? <laughs> that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me, but that's what they stated in the report. What are you going to do? Now, banks make money by having your money. Remember, we're talking about fractional reserve lending, right? They take in your money, right? They pay you almost nothing on your deposit. <laughs> and then they loan it out at much higher rates. And that's how they make their money. So they need your money in the bank so that they can make their money. They're making money on your money. You know, I'm sorry, guys, but, you know, if you keep your money in the bank, you're a chump. Okay, <laughs> They're really taking advantage of you. So they don't like to see competition with other currencies. They don't like the idea that you are using an alternative form of currency, like any kind of cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Ethereum, you, you name it. They don't like that. And they have actually uh, made it very difficult for a lot of people to do transactions uh, with exchanges. Any of us who do any kind of cryptocurrency transactions, they will go so far as to say, no, we're not gonna let you send your money to Coinbase, Kraken, Gemini, whatever, to any exchange. Why? Because they're looking out for you. It's in your best interest that we don't let you transfer your money into an exchange. So it is a constant dance for any of us in the crypto space to get anything done because the banks are sticking their nose into our business. So they're making it increasingly difficult for us. I mean, in the end, we still rely on the fiat currency system, right? Well, you know, with, with your Bitcoin, you do still need your banks, you know, for the time being. So we need the banks to retrieve our cryptocurrencies. When, when we're done with all of our crypto stuff, eventually we need to end up back in our bank account. And they're just really gumming up the works for us to try to get anything done. We can still do it, but we have to be increasingly creative in order to get our transactions done. Now, one of the ways that the banks are making life difficult for us crypto consumers is that they are backing legislation uh, with the government in order to crack down on cryptocurrencies. Again, in your best interest, right? <laughs> they don't care about your interest. They're trying to preserve their monopoly, right? They're trying to preserve their business. That's why they're doing it. They don't give up flying squirrel <laughs> about your interests, okay? They're protecting their interests. I mean, we can still get things done, but we just have to be a little creative sometimes and, and show a little patience you know, sometimes. And if your bank is going to be really, really hard on you, fire your bank. Go out and find a crypto-friendly bank because there are some out there. All right, so now let's talk about the central banks. Okay, now the central banks, uh, they also hate Bitcoin. The head of the European Central Bank very recently said that Bitcoin is not worth anything and that nobody should put anything into Bitcoin unless they're willing to lose it all. OK, she said that Jerome Powell does his usual double speak. You can never get a straight answer out of him, but, you know, he doesn't like competition for his precious fiat U.S. dollar. Right. So central banks like commercial banks, okay, they don't like uh, uh, cryptocurrency. They don't like the idea that you could do transactions, you can you could conduct business, you could have wealth in anything other than their designated fiat currencies. And that leads us to the governments. And that's kind of tied in with the central banks. Actually, these are all kind of tied in. These themes run throughout all of these guys. Now, there are already governments throughout the world that have uh, more or less banned uh, cryptocurrencies. You got Russia, you got China, and you got a few others. And I mean, the more totalitarian the government, 
the more they do not like the crypto space because it's all about control. They want to be able to control you. And when you start conducting business with anything other than their designated currencies, they lose a little bit of control to that degree, right? So it's all about this, okay? It's all, Now, in my case, it's the U.S. dollar. If you're in a different country, it's about the fiat currency of your particular country. Because the way banks control their economies and their societies is by the manipulation of the money supply in and out of the pub, public hands, right? And the fewer dollars that are in the monetary system, the less ability governments have to raise money. Governments don't raise all of their money uh, through taxes. They raise a lot of their money through the issuance of bonds. And who's the biggest buyer of bonds? The governments themselves. <laughs> okay. And the less money that, that's in the system, the harder it is for them to control uh, inflation, control the economy, and move the levers of power. Now, I'm a free market guy. I believe in, in free competition. All right. If someone invents a better mousetrap, they should be rewarded for it. Now, in this case, we're talking about the actual means of doing business, which is using a cryptocurrency instead of the government currency. Again, it's about control, okay? When you start seeing this legislation coming out over cryptocurrencies, and they tell you that it's about protecting you against scammers, it's protecting you against, uh, against investments that are too aggressive, don't believe it. Don't buy it. That's not why. It's about control. Now, some of you might, might be saying, well, what do you mean they don't like uh, cryptocurrencies? Uh, the government is going to come out with their own digital currency here very soon uh, called the CBDC, right? Central Bank Digital Currency, and also known as the FedCoin. So, Ed, they're going to have their own uh, digital currency. No, they're not. It's not a true cryptocurrency. The two big differences between Bitcoin and the FedCoin is Bitcoin is decentralized. Right, there's no controlling party. Whereas the Fed coin is going to have a controlling party, the Federal Reserve, and they're going to be able to control it. It'll be centralized. That's a very big distinction. The other huge difference is that Bitcoin is non-programmable. Okay, it's it's the the, the code is immutable. I mean, there are 21 million Bitcoin. That's all there is. That's all there ever was. And that's all there will ever be. The the code is immutable. It cannot be changed. Whereas the Fed coin is programmable, which means they can program exactly what you can spend your Fed coins on. You, you want to talk about control. This is the ultimate form of control. Wouldn't it be great if we had some brave politician who actually stood up and said, we are going to ban the adoption of a, a CBDC? Wouldn't that be wonderful? Hey, that guy would have my vote. <laughs> uh, listen, at this point, you know, it looks like it, it, it's in the cards. It is coming and it's going to affect our lives in a very bad way. When this Fed coin is finally up and running and we are being and we're going to be coerced onto it, our lives are never going to be the same. You think our freedoms are under attack now? Wait until that happens. You are not going to recognize this country or whatever country you're in. Your freedoms are going to be gone because the government is going to control every little aspect of your life because they're going to know exactly what you're spending your money on and they can keep you from spending your money on whatever you want. And that includes, in theory, making contributions to your favorite political party. Or if you say the wrong thing on a social media network, or if you eat too many hamburgers, or if you have a car that actually runs on gas, I mean, our lives are going to be controlled. Basically, the reasons why all these three entities hate digital currencies are the same. There are a few minor differences between them, but it's all about control. And the more that you exercise your freedom, the more they lose control. And they do not like that. Okay, so that's it for today's rant. Please give me a like. Please subscribe if you haven't. And let me know what you think about what I just said. Ed Anderson, live from Minnesota, signing out. Copy that. Copy that.